with Alan Terhune, the winner of the uh, MC Class Inland at 2021 at Okoboji. Alan's relatively new to the MC, He's the, uh, and I'll let him tell you about himself in a, in a few minutes, but uh, did an awesome job winning four of the seven races. Uh, blew everybody away. So we're going to get started with some questions. Uh, first of all, uh, Alan, just introduce, uh, introduce yourself, kind of your background, and uh, how you got into the MC. Yep, sure. Uh, well, first, thanks, Al, for doing this. Um, but I'm Alan Terhune. I work at North Sales in Annapolis, and uh, you know, started sailing MCs about a year ago now. Um, kind of a new class for me. Uh, I've done some scout sailing growing up in New Jersey, did a bunch of e-boats and stuff like that, but uh, the growth of the MC out, in, out east has kind of taken off, and North Sales needing to support the class a little more. We've, we've spent some more time sailing MCs, so uh, it's been good. You know, we started last year in Eustis as our first real regatta, and you did a couple training sessions with us, and um, it's been a lot of fun. A lot of nice people, boats fun to sail. It's been great, mm -hmm. really good. And North Sales is, uh, you know, into the MC class in terms of uh, sales. Yeah. Say a little bit about that. For sure, I mean, I think um, obviously everyone's kind of wondering what we've been up to, and you know, our focus for the MC has never been stronger I would say and we have a couple of new sales we're really happy with and uh, obviously it performed really well here um, we had seven awesome races here honestly uh, you couldn't have had nicer sailing I don't know what you think but you couldn't have had three nicer days here in Okoboji and um, yeah our new sail was just killer uh, really versatile did what it needed to do and uh, some of the other guys had the heavy air sail which was was good as well and everybody seemed really happy so we're, we're pretty stoked right now Great. Yeah. So being relative to the, yeah. relatively new to a cl the class, but an experienced sailor in lots of classes, yeah. what was um, what was different about learning the MC? What would you say about the well, boat in general? Yeah, I mean, the one thing about scows is you sail it heeled over, right? So right. every other boat, you're taught to sail it as flat as you can. This boat, you don't. But I think the one thing that's key is having a constant heel angle. And here, where it was really puffy, I think that was really important. So figuring out whether you're going to bang sheet or drop the traveler or steer or however you're going to do it. Uh, keeping your heel angle was, was really important. Um, I think you recall we did our test session or practice in Eustis and we worked really hard on that. We had our coach there and uh, you and Chris were sailing and we were working really hard. We found out in any air, if you kept the angle constant, the boat just went faster. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that was even key here, especially when it's choppy. Mm -hmm. The boat starts to hobby for us. It gets mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. So today, were you more bang sheeting or dropping traveler? Yeah. You're heavier, so. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm definitely bigger, but you know, there's definitely, all the teams with crews were definitely bigger than me, right? Mm -hmm. So um, for me, I use the traveler more as a gross adjustment. I don't say I'm playing the traveler in every puff. It's if I know it's gonna be windy, I'll put it down and then continue to bang sheet from there or mm -hmm. have it up and bang sheet. Mm -hmm. But um, today it was pretty much on center line, but I bang sheet quite a bit. Um, mm -hmm. I think there's there's two things about the bang that's important when you bang sheet. One, when you ease, it goes out. But the second part everyone needs to remember is when you pull the bang on, it bends the mast and flattens the sail quite a bit. And it, if you're sailing single-handed, it's crucial. Um, so if the sail gets too full and you ease and it gets twisted, you actually power up and you heal more. So you mm -hmm. need to make sure the bang's on so when you ease, it twists off and mm -hmm. you go forward. I think that's the key. Straight yeah. leech and going forward. Yeah. So what we're, what, this is a difficult regatta for everybody. Yeah. So, and I know we talked about that, but yeah. describe for the, the audience what yeah. the, uh, some of the biggest challenges and how you addressed them. Yeah, so it, it's interesting, we got, A, I've never been here, so, you know, the one thing I've learned and what's been fun about getting into this class being new is it's easy to pick everyone's brain, right? I mean, you can even tell when I started, we were asking you way more questions than you were asking me, and it's a good because you can talk to people and learn stuff. Um, the challenge of this regatta, honestly, is we sailed seven races, and I think we sailed At least four, four, different. four different courses over seven races. So we sailed on four different parts of the lake. Every race was different. Um, the starting line was surprisingly challenging. Uh, you would think it was only 45 boats, 40, 42, boats, whatever, yeah. mid 40s in boats. You would think it would be overwhelming, but the starting was actually quite hard uh, compared to even, say, the Nationals and Midwinters, where there's 70, 80 boats. So getting off the line was really important. Um, and then I think the other thing is it was really easy in this venue to get fixated on a side of the course. And that happened a couple times, like, uh, oh, the left side would do okay. The second beat up, you'd see the fleet, you know, go right to the left and someone would go to the right and make a big gain because they were open-minded. So um, 
that was an interesting one for me to kind of take away. And in the middle of the regatta, I had a couple of tough races, and, and basically I had to back up and kind of think about it, because one of the things you can't do, I think, in lake sailing is chase the breeze. You have to really sail in the wind that you were in. So it was really easy to be, oh, there's big puff on the right side, so you tack, you go to the right side, well, the puff's gone, now it's back on the left side, and you have to just work kind of the area you're in and, and really focus on that. So I think that was also a big lesson for me. Yeah, we had a conversation about um, the... Uh one of the races yesterday when we were down in the yep. up in the north part of the lake and there was this point yeah and uh we were talking afterwards about the compass numbers and right how did you you know how do you got to that big lift off the point right and and to your point i mean so what was interesting about that is we talked about it was on the course we sailed yesterday which is the third course it was actually the one we thought we were going to race on mostly but we didn't right um and we did a practice day here and our coach was like this point in this wind direction will be a factor in the left side. And we talked about it in our coaching session, and I guess this is one of those things, I guess, if you have a coach, you better pay attention. Mm -hmm. And he was spot on. When you got there, you were going, going, going. I remember yesterday we were like 140 on starboard tack, and all of a sudden you get close to the point, it went right to 130, and there was kind of two mistakes to be made. One, you could tack too early and fall out of the puff because you weren't in it far enough. And then the other one was you went too far. You kept sailing the header to get to the point, and then you attack. You'd only be lifted for a short amount, and then you'd go right back to normal. So it was a fine line of taking the header just enough to make sure you're in the puff and then tacking and taking that big lift. And mm -hmm. it was only a minute-long geographical mm -hmm. exercise, I guess, but it made a huge difference. I mean, all of a sudden you're up 10 degrees for a minute. That was a big part of the race. So, And it seemed like a lot of the... A lot of the race course was that way yeah. a lot of times. And then there's talk about the uh, puffs that didn't move, too. Yeah, and that was, again, you know, it was really crucial to come here. We, I, you know, what day of the week was it? Sunday? Sunday. Sunday. We were here practicing. And um, we were very lucky to have a good coach with us. And, and he was like, look, the puffs here, I call them stationary puffs. You have to sail to them, get in it, and then move because they don't move very quick. And he was really right. It was pretty easy to see a puff coming. You'd think you'd tack under it to get lifted, and the puff would just sit there, and you'd sail around it. Mm -hmm. So it was it was good piece of advice, and it kind of goes back to your thing about asking questions and yeah. picking everyone's brain. So yeah. it was awesome. All right. So now, bringing yeah. your new your fresh eyes to this yeah. class, yeah. What would you say to coach the sailors, the average sailors yeah. that you saw here? I mean, I think uh, a couple things. I think one, and this is a lesson I learned, is really focusing on your rig tuning. Oh, did I move? No. Nope. Really focusing on your rig tuning, uh, making sure that you're, you trust your rig numbers, your rig numbers. I think that's, I, I think uh, knowing when you're going fast, writing down your stay master numbers and doing things. I mean, I, I know in the, whatever it was, the first race yesterday, I literally didn't loosen my rig up from the day before when it was really windy. Sailed the first race in the morning, it was too tight and just was not very quick. Mm. As soon as I loosened loosen the rig up, right to the front of the thing. So, you know, just keeping track of those things. I mean, it's so simple, but you got to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think it's it's funny, and I know I'm just as guilty. I'm learning. You got to hike, <laughs> and it, especially if you have a crew. It's it's funny. You see the, the skippers with crews, and the crews are all hiking. They're on their toes. And you see the skipper kind of sitting there just driving. It's like they got to hike too, because that's a huge advantage. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of it. And um, you know, I I think for anybody who's still trying to figure it out. You know, the guys in the class are really responsive, keep asking questions, and going back to it, focus on heel angle. I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. um, and the last thing, and I did learn this this week too, is from our coach, uh, JP, was just, we were sailing in at the end, he's like, you have a lot of helm, just pull the board up just like an inch. Mm -hmm. and it was just enough, and all of a sudden, he's like, until you feel the helm like break. And I pulled it, pulled it, and all of a sudden you can feel the tiller let go, and the boat just took off. Mm -hmm. And that was in like 15 knots of breeze. So. I think there's a lot to that. If you're struggling on the helm, it's probably a board issue more than even sheets. Yeah, so. JP told us that when he goes out to sail in windy races, yeah. he spends several minutes getting the, the board angle. The rig tension, the board angle, the yeah. traveler, how much he wants to. Yeah, and it was it was funny. I always kind of thought I was happy with the board down mm -hmm. and doing everything, and it was a huge lesson learned. So my takeaway actually the biggest takeaway of the whole weekend was how valuable the three day the three of us or five of us how many were out five five, yeah. five of us went out on sunday and had a practice with an actual coach and spent we were all in the water for what two and a half hours mm -hmm. it wasn't a huge day but man did we learn a lot i mm -hmm. think it was super valuable yeah yeah 
Well, great, Alan. Thanks a lot. Thank and you, congratulations Alan. on a terrific regatta. You can't do it without your telltales. Yeah, yeah. Thank you can't very much. Thanks for the plug. <laughs> the yellow ones are the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Al. Yep. Yeah.